Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I am Monique and this is Monique Speaks and Reactions. I hope all of you guys are doing well. It is Monday, October the 14th, 2024. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you've new, welcome to the channel. So guys, look at this picture here. And I know it's kind of vulgar in a sense with this young man with his finger, um, you know, as if to say... <laughs> you know, flipping someone off. But I thought this picture gave a good representation of what I want to talk about. And what I want to talk about is our sowers of discord. Biblically, the Bible talks about that. Um, in another video, I talked about Karen's and Patty's and chatty Patty's, but this is about a sower of discord. If you look at this picture right here, it looks like people are mad, upset, angry. They're talking on the phone. It's a lot of confusion. And guess what? This person right here in the middle is the cause of it, but they really don't care. And you can tell by the fact that he has his middle finger up. Now, a soul of a discord can be anyone. It could be a man, woman. It could be a child. It could be an adult. It could be a teacher. It could be anyone. It could be a son, daughter, mother. But a soul of discord is really, really an insidious type of person that causes discord whether it's in a family whether it's in a group like a musical group um whether it's in a marriage uh whether it's in relationships between brothers or sisters um this person is going to sow discord and they really don't care and that's the aim and one of the aims of the enemy is to kill still and destroy and part of destruction is not only to destroy you to the fact to the point where you are no longer alive and that you leave here without um, having a covenant and being uh, covered by the most high and becoming, you know, born again, but also to destroy your relationships. And so uh, souls of discord, there are many examples in the Bible of, of the people who wanted to sow discord and had ulterior motives. Um, one that I can think of is Jezebel, um, Absalom. He sold discord with people and got people mad. Uh, I, I mean, it was just so many. I can think of Herod. Um, who else? Um, David's son uh, sold discord to the fact where, you know, he went up against his own father, um, but he lost his life um, at the end. So souls of discord will use something called triangulation. So this person, all the while, they're causing confusion within relationships, um, but you never really know that it's them. And what they will do is cause breakdowns in relationships and communication, and especially if you come from an environment or maybe even a family structure, right, where your communication skills are not really there. You know, the, the communication is, is, is lacking, right? So one of the things I've learned from the Bible and while I'm talking about this, something happened recently with me, not gonna say with me, but my antennas went up. And as you start to heal guys, and as you start to do the work of healing in your life, you will learn better coping mechanisms, but you start to put two and two together. And the way you think and respond to things should be totally different than prior to you, um, you know, getting in and really doing the hard work of healing from maybe trauma or different things of that nature. So recently a situation occurred where, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, doing what I need to do to do the hard work. And a conversation came about with a person um, that I hadn't spoken to in a while. And um, the conversation kind of went something like, um, you know, it, the conversation kind of shifted and when it shifted to what I believe to be gossip or even slander about someone, because bottom line is if somebody comes to you and says something, um, I've come to the realization that you need to go check with that person. Or if that person is saying something, you'd be like, you know what? Since you said that, let's go check with such and such and, you know, confirm this or clarify this, you know, and that puts that person on front street. Um, so the conversation went a little too, I would say kind of to the left 
with the other person saying, well, you know what? Such and such told me this person stole and such and such told me this person took this and such and such told me this person did that. And I stopped them and I said, wait a minute. Um, knowing the history of that particular family, I said, you know what? I don't think anybody hands are really clean. I don't think anybody really has room in this particular set of individuals to say anything. Nobody's hands are clean. Number one. The next thing I did was said, this person cannot defend themselves. So this creates, um, you know, almost a situation where the person is trying to make me feel a certain way about someone else. I'm like, this person is not here to defend themselves. They can't say yay or nay. Um, we have three other individuals who a little had some shady, you know, and we all, nobody's hands in this world is clean. We all are sinners. We all have iniquity. But in this particular situation, I was like, uh, uh, no baby, nobody who you are telling me about at this point in time that saying this about someone else um their hands are definitely not clean and they really don't have any room to speak so unless um this person can't defend themselves I'm not listening to it and I want no parts of it I immediately shut the conversation down and was like you know what I want no parts of the confusion I want no parts of the because it's they, there's always a person who sows discord and what they try to do is triangulate. So now this person, A, who might be incarcerated, they can't defend themselves. They, whether they're incarcerated or not, they can't speak for themselves. But what everybody else is trying to say may or may not be true. So it's, you, you start to see, well, why are you even telling me this? I haven't spoken to you in a month of Sundays. So why is the first thing that you get into is telling me what three other people in this dysfunctional family has to say about the person who's incarcerated? I don't know if this is true or not, and I don't want to entertain it, and I don't even want to think about it because the other person is not there to defend themselves, and in my opinion, it's gossip and slander. So I shut the communication down. I shut the conversation down immediately. So is of discord will always bring information to you. Something that you don't know anything else about, something that is going to be so grandiose that makes you kind of, you know, think twice about the person that they're talking about. And one of the things I've learned is to wholeheartedly not allow anybody to bring me anything. Don't bring me no gossip. Don't bring me no tale, but nothing. Because I want to make a decision on my own how I interact with those people by myself. Not based on what you said. Maybe the person has stolen stuff in the past. But does that mean that what you're saying is correct right now? Why tell me this now? I don't want to hear that. So one of the things I've learned is sowers of discord, they, they, they plant little seeds. And one of the first sowers of discord was the enemy, which is Satan, the devil himself. He planted a seed in Eve's, you know, and if you're a believer, then you know what I'm talking about in the garden of Eden. Well, you know, if you eat from the the tree of good and bad, you know, you, you will be like God and know right from wrong. And then Eve in her mind, she's thinking, wait a minute, is he hiding something from me? He planted a seed. And so this is what souls of the score do. Just like this young man here, this whole family is in an uproar over something. He said, he don't give a darn. Nobody's really thinking it's him, but he's the one that sold all of this to score. And they like to throw stones and then hide their hands. So as I'm talking to this person, I'm like, look, okay, I, nobody has clean hands. And the people who are saying this, they don't have such good past track records of their own. So I don't want to hear it. I will not listen to it. I will not entertain it. it. What does it do for me at this point in time? You telling me this. The only thing that that could do is make me think less of that person. Make me think poorly of that person. That's the only thing that you telling me these negative things could possibly do. And in my mind, that's exactly what you want to do. So no, I don't entertain things like that. Souls of discord are insidious. Souls of discord, especially if they're older, 
they may have been doing this for years and years and years, and they will triangulate the entire, you know, whomever they're triangulating. Okay. So, you know, it creates chaos and we know who the author of confusion and the author of chaos is. So let's talk about, uh, triangulation and the souls of discord. That's one of the things they use, um, you know, uh, to cause confusion and it can happen in a variety of ways. Um, it can happen in different settings. Okay. So let's talk about the way a sower of discord can use triangulation and what ends up happening is there's no communication and relationships are ruined all together. That is the ultimate goal. A lot of times it's a lot of mistrust takes place. They plant seeds of mistrust. Um, there's a lot of confusion. It can ruin your friendships, your marriage and any relationships that you have. And that is their actual purpose for doing so. So let's look at division among friends. Person A Person B and person C are friends. Person A is feeling insecure because person B and person C are showing each other a little more attention one-on-one. -on -one. Person A has to be the favorite. So person A goes to person B and casually mentions something about person C. It could be very casual. Well, I don't know if you know um, such and such and such. And that will plant a seed of mistrust within person B. Person A then goes to person C and does the same thing. Well, I don't know if you know, but I'm going to just let you know this, that such and such told me that such and such stole money or did this. So now they have started uh, planting mistrust. OK, and that can cause and then all of a sudden the person's not calling you no more. You don't know what's going on because person A has become the. Uh patty okay the petty patty okay and the chatty patty which is the gossiper okay now i hope you're following me if both person b and c trust person a so this may be a mother a son it could be anybody if both person b and c trust this person they're gonna say well why would person a even tell me it must be true they never question it because this person now has now, you know, maybe an outstanding person in society might be, you know, and if this occurs in small and deceitful ways over time, person A can ruin the friendship of person B and C. Person A can then be the shoulder to cry on for person B and person C, thereby regaining their best friend status. Do you see how insidious and disgusting this is? I've seen it happen. I didn't know it was happening, but now I look back at certain situations and I'm like, oh, and it doesn't have, they may not, they just may plant a seed like, well, you know what? Somebody told me that this person, you know, had took about 10, you know, and they'd start planting seeds. And uh, uh, yeah, so let's go to the next way, the cover up. Person A said or did something terrible to person B. Okay, so this person has done something terrible. Person A is afraid that news will get out about their reputation. Mm -hmm. So maybe person A went and did something and, and maybe did steal some money or maybe did go and try to, you know what I mean? So they're scared. Person B knows about it. Right. And the person B may go tell the family, like, look, this is what happened. They had to go to court, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. So what they're going to do is try to preempt that strike. Person A preemptively begins to slander person B to person C. And maybe persons D, E, F, and G, whoever will listen. So they do a preemptive strike. And we call this, a, a, in the books, a slander or a smear campaign. Because now they need to get ahead of what they have done. Because they think that if person B gets out and says it, that could be their daughter. It could be their son. It could be anybody. Thinking that if no one trusts person B, they will not believe them when they out person A. So they are, this is the person in the middle right here who will get out and start a smear campaign because they're afraid that their reputation will get 
tarnished. So what they do is lie about something that never really even happened, but they get out in front of it and people won't trust what that person is saying. See what I'm saying? See how this works? It's a very insidious thing. And that's why the Bible talks about souls of discord. My, um, my way of getting around this, let's go to person A. If somebody comes to you with something, a way to find out and, and call out and to expose these souls of discord, don't believe what everybody just tells you right off the bat. You may have to go to the source and say, like, hey, what's going on? Such and such and such and such. Thriving in chaos is another way because they love chaos. Person A simply loves to cause drama because this places the attention on themselves. So in this particular situation that I, I was like, why are they even telling me this stuff? And they were like, oh, yeah, I called um, everybody in the family to let them know why. Why? To get attention? Is that what you're doing? But anyway, sometimes person A plays the victim role, slandering person B to person C with false claims of misconduct. They like to smear people and say things that are just not true. Sometimes person A plays the hero, slandering person B to person C so that person A can swoop in and save the day. It is just a very, let me tell you something, so is a discord that's why when people come and bring me something, I don't even want to hear it. I, let, let's get on the phone and call this person. They ain't going to want to do that because they're going to think, and this has happened to me before where somebody says something and I, because of my behavior and lack of coping skills, instead of saying, hold on for a minute, let's call up such and such and such to see if this is true. I took everything they said for truth. It's so discord. It almost broke relationship. And whether it's true or not, um, you know, the purpose was to sow discord, fueling jealousy. Person A and person B are in a romantic relationship. Person A does not think that person B is giving them enough tension or otherwise failing to meet the ideal partner, you know, goals. Person A casually mentions something good or admirable about person C in attempts to make person B feel jealous. That is just ridiculous. It is, it's demonic, okay? So why do people triangulate? Triangulation can occur in many ways, but the theme is always similar, okay? And many narcissists, they triangulate. Uh, one person is playing puppet master with two or more people causing division and strife for their own purposes. You may not, they've have already studied you. They know where your relationships are. They know where there might be little cracks and fissures in relationships. So they're trying to do this for their own personal gain. These purposes could be to retain power, to gain admiration, to avoid accountability or to be looked down upon. And more, sadly, the people being triangulated are often unaware of it because person A always holds the cards. They form trusting relationships with everyone and they control the narrative about themselves, person B and person C. Um, and so let's talk about this. Where does triangulation occur? It can occur in almost any setting. Um, but it's hinged on human interaction and relationships. So if you have uh, relationships, there's going to be somebody who might be a sower of discord because they don't want you to interact, nor do they want you to have a relationship. It's if they come to ruin relationships. And the enemy is smart like this because if there are people who are helpful, who are in your life to help, or you're there helping them or going to be the person to pray for them, they are going to make, he's going to make sure that those relationships are ruined. Sometimes triangulation occurs between a mother and siblings. This is probably one of the most city insidious demonic ways triangulation occurs. Um, it says sometimes triangulation occurs between a mother and the siblings as she feels division between the siblings or between the siblings and their other parent. Sometimes triangulation occurs between spouses and an ex or other family members. Sometimes triangulation occurs between friends. Sometimes triangulation happens in the workplace as one attempts to climb the ladder while stepping on the backs of others. Okay. 
So how to be avoid being triangulated and these sowers of discord. One of the best ways to avoid triangulation is to avoid vicarious relationships in which one person acts as the go-between for you and another. It is best that you go to that person directly and speak to them because they will take things out of context. They will say you said something that you didn't say or be like, well, by the way, you know what? Such and such said this to cause that person to have a reaction, which they know the person will have a reaction because they studied the relationships and they studied the cracks in the fissures that might be in a relationship this is all planned sometimes people person a draws uh then okay another way to avoid triangulation is to be on guard against gossip <laughs> didn't i just talk about that at the beginning and i know this is kind of long but i'm gonna end it really soon and maybe we can have a part two Sometimes people really are victimized and they need someone to talk to. They just need someone who knows because they feel totally alone in their situation. However, in all situations, do your best to prevent to refrain from choosing sides because you never really know what happens between other people unless you witness the actions yourself. You really don't know what's happened. Definitely do not spread the information to other people. Okay, so it says here's another tip. If you notice a lot of drama, drama in a family or workplace, um, is there a person who always seems to be involved no matter what's going on, either as the victim or the hero? If there is a common denominator within all the drama, it is very possible the person is the one creating it. Okay, so uh, not all the time, but it could be that. You know what I mean? So if somebody is carrying news to you, um, don't take sides. And that's what I did in this last conversation. I was like, you know what? Nobody's hands is clean. And I really don't want to hear it. I don't want any parts of it. Um, and I don't think anybody <laughs> who lives in glass houses can really throw any stones. So at this point, I'm done. I don't want to hear it. And I don't even believe what these other people are saying. I don't. Okay. I really, really don't. Especially from the people that it's coming from. So so is of discord cause breakdown and maybe people may not speak to each other for years months or forever and that's exactly what they want to do they want all of the attention so they'll start discord over here over here the other people believe it because they're like well why would they lie i don't know why they would lie but people do lie and they don't always tell the truth or they tell a half truth or they tell the story in a way to make you upset not to tell the story in the way it really occurred and it really wasn't anything to say. So if you know a so of discord, I'm giving you some good examples as to how to deal with it. Don't entertain it. Don't take sides. And if it's gossip, I don't want to hear it. I want no parts of it. So guys, let me know what you think. Souls of discord are all scattered throughout the Bible. Um, people who break down and cause a tyranny of relationships. And unfortunately, the other people on the outside don't know that this is going on. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants sometimes people to be isolated. He wants people not to have friendships that are really might be your destiny helpers and people who are sent. But he will send somebody in to cause confusion okay he will send a vessel in and a lot of times probably 99.9% .9 of the times it's somebody close to you family members maybe close friends that you think of friends they're souls of discord and then you're like what's going on I haven't heard from this person this person stopped talking to me I don't know what's going on because somebody done went and said something to cause confusion mm -hmm. so let me know down in the comments you know how we do um i want to hear have you ever been involved in a situation where somebody was a soul of discord and uh you found out about it but i'm here to tell all the souls of discord your time is up okay you will be exposed for who you are what you are and what you have been for all of these years so in discord amongst family members brothers sisters cousins nephews uncles aunts you are going to be exposed and people are going to know exactly who you are and you're going to be put on front street because the, that is one of the things that the Lord said he hates are sowers of discord in the brethren. So uh, people need to be put on notice. There's nothing that you're going to be able to do anymore. Throw rocks, hide your hand and then act the fool down the road later on. And then mm -mm, it's not going to happen. So no matter who you are, if you're sowing discord in your family, lying, defaming, smearing, telling half truths, 
you know, causing discord, you're going to be found out. Just you wait and see. You're going to be found out in the worst way. But anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think about this. The sowers of discord. Honey, there's so many people like this in the world right now, but I'm not listening to nobody. I'm taking everything into prayer. And then I'll be like, you know what? Since you want to do so much talking, let's go to that person right now. And uh-uh, uh-uh. They ain't going to want to go to the source. They want to go. But some and such told me that he did this and that this person told me he took 10 down. I was like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Because guess what? It's slander and gossip. And this person, no matter how much people may think about him, it may not even be true. So y'all let me know what you think in the comments down below Like, share, su subscribe And you know what When souls of the score come Give them the side eye And keep it moving Don't even entertain them Shut them down right where they at and keep it moving. But you know, if they are narcissists, <laughs> there's going to be a narcissistic injury. And they're going to smear your name anyway. So just expect it. But all those name smearers, mm -hmm, um, carrying lies and saying stuff, <laughs> you soon, your time soon will come. All right, y'all. Like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell. And I will see you on the next episode of Monique Speaks and Reactions. All right, y'all. Peace. And I'm out.